Hello and welcome back to A to Z Subculture, where today we're doing a kitchen review on... Uh, got a bit of a glare, but Chicago Cutlery. Man, looks real nice in the camera here. Look at that. Nice shine to it. So this is um, Chicago Cutlery series, um, the Walnut Tradition series. And I have here um, three different products. So the first product is this one right here, and this is their 14-piece block set. Then we have their three-piece, which is right here, these three. And then a single knife, um, and that would be their 7.5-inch uh, fillet knife. I believe it's 7.5-inch. And um, I got these very recently at uh, shopworldkitchen.com for a heck of a price for what I have yet to discern as any different really good knives actually um, Chicago Cutlery doesn't have a website of its own that I have yet found which is kinda weird for such a nice um, nice blades nice knife sets and everything which is kinda weird um, that they don't have their own site but from um, culinary reviewers and um, people that I know that went to color culinary school and teachers at culinary school um, they highly recommend Chicago Cutlery it's they make nice blades um, which is weird that they, they don't have their own website to sell stuff out of they sell out of somewhat random uh, retailers like I've seen Chicago Cutlery at Kohl's and um, Bath, Bed Bath and Beyond and other places like that where they just have an array of kitchen things. So we're going to start off with the three piece set. And, um, I got all of this from shopworldkitchen.com for like $62, which is insane. It was, they, that site gets a lot of sales. And yes, at first I was very hesitant because hearing good reviews about Chicago Cutlery, plus no reviews online that I could find for any of these sets, it makes it seem a little sketchy from a random website that I never hear from. So, uh, here's a review for everybody else out there that is looking for um, decent knives, actually, for a hell of a price. And it's pretty impressive, actually. I, I, I mean, look at this. This is an 8-inch chef's knife as part of the one of three set here. The 8-inch comes um, very, very sharp. It's a nice blade. They have, what you can tell here, is the walnut traditional uh, handle. And it is a full tang with rivets um, securing the handle to the blade itself. And uh, this here is the walnut handle. Might be able to see a little bit in the camera here. It's a pretty nice, it's a pretty nice blade, um, as are the rest of these. The handles are a uh, nice wood, but they are a bit blocky, a bit boxy, as you can kind of see here. They're not very round. They're kind of rectangular, which, for some people it isn't so bad because then it gives you a nice grip on top and underside and then your fingers go down the sides and then you grip it like this to keep it secure. Um, it's a really nice feel. It has a nice weight. As you can kind of see, it's a little heavy in the handle, but it balances pretty well right where the heel is. So it's a nice knife. It's created pretty well. It's carbon steel, I believe. Um, which means that it's a tough steel, but you'll still have to sharpen it. I recommend honing all of these um, often so that it, it maintains that edge. Um, our next piece of the three-piece set here is the five-inch boning knife. This is a nice size blade, good for meats and stuff. It is very sharp, and it has a little... Um, indent here in the handle right here where my finger is you can kind of see 
it indents in and then you got this little heel protecting you and it just gives you a nice grip so that when you're cutting through meats and you, if you nick a bone or something you're not gonna <laughs> you're not gonna accidentally um, jump the knife or something you you won't hurt yourself you got a really good grip on this so we'll show that here see the little uh, bump here for your hand and it has a nice curve to the blade it's back is pretty straight all of their blades are um, do lean back a little bit from the handle so the hand goes straight up and then the blades kind of curve back um, I think it gives it a bit of a structural um, feel as well as um, it's just a nice design the next piece here which with the walnut handle does look pretty bulky I will admit I mean look at that that's all handle and then you got the blade the blades real thin but the handle is bulky as heck which I suppose isn't so bad because then it gives you something nice to actually grip onto for, um, for when you're using this paring knife. So you're cutting through an apple or something, you got your, your blade here and you just kind of cut as needed. Um, the paring knife here does have a nice shape and everything to it. It's got a sharp blade here and the blade itself is very structural here so that you can hold it. Um, this is how I was always taught to use a paring knife. I know they say you're not supposed to cut towards yourself, but if you have a nice knife and the proper skills, this paring knife, that's how you're supposed to use it. You hold stuff here and you cut in, but you don't slice. It slides through because it's sharp and you keep it sharp. Um, and then if you press on the blade with your thumb or something, you're not going to cut yourself unless you slide. You don't want to slide. Um, take a look at that bad boy right there. If I can get it to focus. Okay, it does not want to focus. No, does not want to focus. Okay, well, <laughs> it's fairly in focus back here. It's just not a zoom in on it. Um, it's a pretty small blade, eh? but it, that's what you want with these because then it's easier to control for small in, uh, increments of cutting for fruits and different things like that. So you're cutting out the top of a, um, a strawberry or something. It makes it real easy to use. Um, the other knife I have here on the table, this is the 7.5 fillet knife that Chicago Cutlery makes in the Walnut Tradition series. Um, again, I think they do this with a lot of the meat knives. You can see here that it has the bulky handle but it comes into an indent for your finger so that you have a good grip on this, a nice grip, so that when you are cutting a fish or whatever, um, usually you'll cut fish with these. Um, the reason why is because if you can tell, it bends. You want a fairly flexible knife for fillet knives because you want to be able to get that knife right up in there in the fish's fillet, and you want it to kind of curve into it, but you don't want to nick or cut past the, the rib cage and stuff. So you're gonna glide it right across the rib cage itself. So bending it kind of helps you get in there because fish are curved, <laughs> they're not flat. They may look flat from certain sides, but trust me, you wanna get that knife in there just nicely so that you can get that, um, that fillet as neat cut as possible. You want that nice cut of meat so that it's intact and uh, it's not all janky looking where, you know, sometimes you cut a piece of meat and it's got jagged cuts in it and it's not a nice presentation and it, you lose some of the meat. That, that's stuff you want to eat. <laughs> um, so that there is the 7.5 inch fillet knife. Uh, again, full tang uh, and riveted in uh, to the large walnut handle here. That would be the case for the entire series here. The only thing that isn't riveted in would be this here, and this is the Honer. It's nice, it's a short one, but it's nice. It's It's got some weight to it. It's a good design and a really nice feel on the handle. Um, this Honer comes with the block set, which is the last um, piece we're gonna be reviewing right now. Uh, it is a 14 piece set, which comes with eight steak knives, which is kind of weird. If you're looking at the block here, it's sectioned in threes. So where are the other two for eight? Well, they're up here, right here. 
So these two areas are reserved for the other two steak knives, which is a little weird. I'm not super fond of that because I feel like the steak knives should all be together and then the specialty knives should be all together up here. So what you got here is you got your two steak knives, you got the other six steak knives here at the bottom. So we'll pull out one of the steak knives to show you. As you can see again, it's got a bit of a an indent here for your hands so that when you're cutting through meat and stuff, you have a good grip. You're not going to slip. And um, it is a pretty sharp blade. A little bit flexible, but not too much, which is good. You want something more rigid, especially for steaks and whatnot, a little tougher meats. And uh, surprisingly, it's a sharp knife, but it's not serrated. Um, so keeping these sharp, you just have to sharpen it with a stone, keep an, a an edge here with the honing um, steel itself. But you don't have to go through the hassle of um, sharpening, specialty sharpening it for serration. Um, on top of that too those serrated knives cut through things better you know because it's, a, it's basically a saw and you don't really have to sharpen them or you sharpen them very rarely because the serration already comes to a point that doesn't dull as fast whereas this blade might dull a little quicker um even though in my opinion it'll be easier to sharpen it's just you're gonna have to sharpen it more than you ever would a serrated knife which is a little disappointing but that's all right that's why i have a steak knife set that is separate than um to this set here this was just a bonus so i have more steak knives if necessary or for um a different purpose so say i have like a big thick steak i'm gonna use the other knives if i have um, smaller cuts of meat or things that would be good for these knives then i'll pull these out you know then you have the right tools for the right scenario um which i think is a good thing the large knife at the top here, which we're going to review next, is the chef's knife that comes with the block. As you can see, it's a little bit smaller than the 8-inch. It is the 6-inch chef's knife. And honestly, I like having both of these. An 8-inch chef's knife is great for cutting larger things and being able to rock it back and forth. But with a 6-inch chef's knife, you're going to have a lot more control, especially for um, finely chopping things. So if you're mincing garlic or some onion or green onion or something like that, um, where you want really nice, even small pieces, this is way easier to control because the blade isn't as long and you're focusing all of the cutting right here at the end, right at the heel of the blade itself. And luckily these don't, these have a heel that goes all the way to the end, which is easier for sharpening. There's no uh, some knives have like a uh, uh, the handle goes to the heel and then you can't use it for cutting and I hate that Luckily for these they have a sharp heel right down here Which is very useful in my opinion if you're ever going to actually do any culinary or cooking or whatever um, Yes, you can just use whatever you want, but in my opinion This is the way to go. That would be the most efficient way to use these knives um, again carbon steel Nice walnut handle with the rivets, full tang, as you can kind of see throughout here. Um, and that is the chef's knife that comes with the block itself. I bought the three-piece series in addition to it because, one, the site had all of this on sale for so cheap that I got all of these knives for $62, which included shipping, which is really cheap for a full knife set. Um, and it's always nice to have a nice variety of knives because you want the right tool for the right um, need. And I might need a six inch chef's knife over an eight inch. Well, maybe I need an eight inch over a six inch. If I only had this and o or only had this, I wouldn't have the right stuff. You're, you're kind of forcing a tool to work for whatever need you, ne you have um, rather than finding the right tool, which will make it easier or um, more accurate or whatever you're going for. So our next section here, I believe this is a nice big knife here. We already saw one similar. As you can see is the three piece set down here. These are both the same blade. It just one comes with the three piece set, one comes with the 14 piece block and they are both the five inch boning knife. Um, we already talked about this one so we don't really need to go into detail. It's got the same handle. Everything's the same. It's just 
this one comes in the box set. So I have an extra boning knife, which can come in handy because if you're making larger meals, you tend to use one knife for something. Well, now if you use that on raw pork, you either got to wash your knife or you got to go and get another knife for poultry, raw poultry or for whatever. And say, really, you're not supposed to use the knife that you used for the raw meat on the cooked meat. So you have two knives to help you out there. One for deboning and, and preparing it to cook and then one after it's cooked for carving, which is nice. You just have a little more dishes to do, but it's one knife, one item. So it's not that big a deal. Our next one here, um, this is the only one in any of the sets, and this is the little tiny utility knife. And you'll see these a lot of times, um, people or blocks or sets or different things sell these. They're just kind of a universal knife. They're just little, very thin, uh, a little bit flexible, not too much, very sharp. Um, not as bulky of a handle as the paring knife, but still a little bit. I mean, you can barely see the blade there, but you can definitely see the handle because it's about as thick as my finger. So um, a lot to grab onto, which does kind of help um, depending on the size of your hand. I have small hands, so it's not that big a deal, but for somebody that has huge hands, maybe this will help, or maybe it's a bit bulky. Um, so it really depends on your, your decision and how you like your knives. If you like something a little more rounded, maybe this isn't for you, or maybe you really like the rustic wood style, but you want it to be a little more rounded, you could sand it down and stain it yourself. They're, they're wood, so you got some wiggle room with that. So we'll put back the utility knife here, which is just useful for a, a number of things. And then again, with the block set though, uh, another paring knife. Again, great for fruits, small vegetables, things that you're not gonna be chopping a lot of. If you're gonna be chopping, you probably want a santoku or a chef's knife as we have here and up here. Um, this is for if you're doing small, um, small intricate cuts. So like if you needed to cut the top of a strawberry out, I'm going to hold the strawberry and cut around the top center just to get the top and the stem out. But I don't want to get any of the delicious berry. I want to keep as much of that. This will help you because it's got that, that nice point to it. You can get it right up in there and it's very sharp so that you can get those cuts um, and get the maximum out of your ingredients, which is fantastic. So that there is the 14 piece block set. Um, steak knives, utility, pairing, boning, honing knife, and chef's knife all included in that set. And then if you want, you can buy some individual knives as well as a few small sets like this three piece set right here and the single fillet knife so that you have a full array of knives for any situation if you want to do more culinary or more cooking. Um, the last thing I do want to touch upon is when you buy these knives, they do not come with any knife guards. Um, so as you can see, these knives, this is how they come. They come uh, packaged in plastic, um, but there's nothing protecting the blade other than sometimes they ship with these, which is just a little cardboard sleeve which what I like to do because it was shipped this way um, the cardboard I don't have a cardboard sleeve that is big enough for the 8 inch chef's knife but the cardboard is big enough for the 6 inch so what I just do is put that on the 6 inch and I swap these out so that the 8 inch fits nicely in the block here because the slice um, the slots for all of the blades actually go all the way to the end of the block so you can fit different size knives in these slots, which is really nice actually. I kind of like that. It makes it a little more versatile. And then I just have, until I buy actual knife guards for these, because I, I wanted to receive them first to see what sizes they were before I ordered something. And I'm just temporarily using these sleeves to keep the knives safe from uh, getting nicked and different things in my knife drawer. That way they are safe. And we're gonna put these sleeves on so I can show you here kind of how they fit. So we got the paring knife fits in here. We got the boning knife fits in this one. And the six inch chef knife fits in this one. And that's because the um, little 
guards here actually came in this block set because the knives all come packaged like individually and then the block itself, which is kind of nice. So provide a temporary guard because these are that all you're trying to do is maintain the edge so that it's not getting nicked around in a drawer or something. Um, well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that kitchen review and hopefully it gives you a little more insight into uh, Chicago cutlery and how actually good I think these knives are. They are fantastic knives. They're just not as well known for some reason. There are hardly any reviews out there, especially for this walnut tradition uh, series. And they're just, they're nice. They, they deserve to be used and loved because they're actually pretty good quality for the price. So heck yeah, I recommend these knives um, over buying something insane. So you want a, a Shino uh, chef's knife or something. Yeah, that costs like 800 to a thousand dollars. Yes, they're nice, but I don't have a thousand dollars to to just throw into the wind. However, I do have under a hundred dollars to buy an eight inch and a six inch and all of these knives, and now I have a knife that will get the job done just fine. Um, that's my opinion on it, and I hope that that helps you guys find what you are looking for. If you were looking at Chicago Chicago cutlery and you needed a review. Here it is. So now you know what it's kind of like. And that'll hopefully help you find what you're looking for and make a better buying decision. Because there's a lot of information out there, but sometimes it's hard to tell because most of the sites that sell these things don't have great reviews. They don't have great descriptions for the item. They don't have great pictures. So now you get to see firsthand what these are like and not have any issues um, going into the sale. So now you know, oh, well, it's like this and it, it feels like this and I like my blades like this for, for my kitchen needs. Well, now you know, this is what you're looking for. That was A to Z Kitchen Reviews and I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time for hopefully some more culinary. Bye.